setting new goals, creating and sticking to healthy habits, building a daily routine you can actually keep. Making these changes should be easy, right? Well, if you're not sure how or where to start, then it's time to try Fabulous. It's been a game changer for me. Fabulous is the habit changing app that gives you the tools and skills you need to feel healthier, more productive, and fulfilled. Fabulous helps you break free of negative habits while helping you build new healthy ones that stick. By using behavioral science, Fabulous breaks down scientifically proven healthy habits into a daily routine of very small tasks that you can easily achieve every single day. The gratitude challenge helped me show gratitude to someone every single day for a week, and that helped me become more mindful. Start building your ideal daily routine today with Fabulous Premium. Get 25% off Fabulous Premium by going to thefab.co slash reps. That's T-H-E-F-A-B dot C-O slash reps for 25% off. Fabulous premium. Thefab.co slash reps. Brooke and I can talk to each other till we're blue in the face about all of our problems. And it's really nice to have somebody listen to you, but neither one of us are licensed professionals, let's just be honest. So th- we use BetterHelp. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can connect in a safe and private online environment. It's so convenient. You don't have to make an appointment, go down to an office, sit there, fit it into your schedule. You can connect with your licensed professional therapist from pretty much wherever you can get online. You can start communicating in under 24 hours. It is not self-help. It is professional counseling. You can send a message to your counselor anytime and you'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. We want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash reps. Join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health Again, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash reps. Hey guys, welcome to Between the Reps with Brooke and Gina. We are yet here again. Yet here, here again. Actually, I don't know if that's he. We are here yet again. We're here yet again. Yet again. I'll start off by reading an email. Okay. Just to, uh, it's just taking us back to last week's episode with Andrew Wax on. And this is from Bree from San Antonio. Hello, Bree. Hello, Bree. She said, hi there. I am probably one of the few people that prefer when you guys don't have guests on. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's been other people that have said that. <laughs> I love just listening and feeling like I'm there hanging out and screwing around with you guys. (laughs) You are screwing around with us guys. Been listening since the beginning. However, I am currently only 18 minutes into the Andrew Wax health coach episode and already blown away. I'm a 30 and in parentheses, she said really 31, but fuck that. (laughs) Oh my God. People in their thirties are so funny. Hey, I'm almost 33. So Brie, you better start accepting that you're 31. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. I would, I would, I don't know, sell one of my children to be 31 again. 31 year old mom of three sweet, but wild boys, wife and CrossFit coach. Everything this man said, describing the two sisters he works with blew my mind. My shitty PCP put me on antidepressants a little over a year ago for all the same symptoms described. And it's helped a little, but not much. I hate how modern medicine works right now. And I wish I could find a physician in my area that understands my lifestyle and my standards for health. A CrossFit friend recommended her doctor to me, but I could, I can't get in to see her till April. Here's hoping I can get the tests I want and learn about, learn more about my body and how it should be running. Anyway, I just thought you both should know how much I appreciated this episode and seriously, every, every other one you have put out. You both helped me with the decision to get a breast augmentation one week post-op and a little forehead Botox. I love it. I love it. Breast augmentation and one week post-op <laughs> and a little forehead Botox. That's how I want to age gracefully. And it's totally okay. It is totally okay. It is totally okay. Anyway, I just, Gina, I am always grateful for the somewhat motherly advice commentary that slips out every once in a while. <laughs> now that I just said I'd sell one of my children. <laughs> 
she's like has great advice. You should totally sell your children for youth. Uh-huh. Yeah. Brooke, you've shown me that it's okay to be yourself and femininity. Femininity is not one size fits all. I love you both and hope I have the opportunity to meet you someday. Oh, I love you too, Brie. Thank you so much for writing in and giving us something to talk about. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I was going to say when we had Andrew on, um, I think that history has shown that there are tons of doctors. I mean, I, I would say probably more so male doctors back in the day that anytime there was something going on with a woman, it was always like in her mind. Yeah. And I think that, I mean, again, I am not, uh, I don't know enough about this to, but I swear to God, I think at, at one point they were uh, prescribing, like, like if women were tired or stressed out, I think they were prescribing something that was like the equivalent of cocaine yeah, like an amphetamine. or speed or amphetamine. Yeah. Are you thinking, people. are you thinking that because we're immediately when you say that it reminds me of the queen's gambit? <laughs> oh, no, I was actually thinking of a, of a, of a, a book, but yeah, I, I remember that was in Queen's Gambit. I think it was like the, when like the house the, mom, she like some, is living with that woman and yes, like they were, no, giving, I mean, they were giving it to the kids, but like the woman also had the prescription for it. Yes. Her mom. I also read a book years ago that the, this, the divine secrets of the Yaya sisterhood or something like that. Oh, I feel like I've definitely heard of that. And her, um, the, the main I think it's like the main character, one of the main characters, her mom, she has like all these memories of her mom when she's younger of kind of like disappearing and like having all these mental issues. And I think it was because they were prescribing her speed or amphetamines, which of course is going to make you absolutely fucking insane. Mm -hmm. But I remember, oh my God, years ago, I would say, oh gosh, I think Nico and I, I mean, I was like in the thick of it. So I probably had like three three kids in middle school and Ruby was in elementary school. And I was just so stressed out, you know, cause anybody that's a mom or, you know, you know, with your mom and your, you know, four kids in your family, there's always like, not just school, but like schoolwork and then all their extracurricular activities and all that shit. So you're just like literally driving or going or, you know, and then I've got a smaller one. And so I was in the thick of it, as I always say, and I was driving down the street. And I just remember driving and it was like, I had this, um, almost like a tingling that started like at the back and it kind of like went over my, like my face. And I was like, Oh, did I just have a stroke? Like, <laughs> like it just was like the weirdest thing. And I was like, Oh my God, I think I had a stroke. And so I made it, I, I go into the doctors. I went to like urgent care or something. And my normal doctor is at our urgent care. And he was like, oh yeah, you're just, it's just stress. It's just this. You just need to, you know, take some time for yourself. And I just thought, who the fuck says that to like a mother of four that has all this shit going on? Like, oh yeah, you're just stressed out. Well, yeah, no fuck. I'm stressed out, but like, what, what can I do about it? He goes, you know what you need to do is you just need to go home and just do nothing all weekend. You're and like, I thought, drive me, um, a prescription for daycare. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like a, a like an au pair, a nanny. Yeah. Like what, what the fuck? I'm just supposed to go and just hang out. And I remember we had like tons of family coming over. I go, well, I don't think that's possible. I have about, you know, six people coming to stay with us for the week. And he goes, well, just do, do, do your best. Just take some time for yourself. And it was just like, it was the least helpful doctor's visit I've ever been to. So, so well, good Brie. I'm glad that, uh, that shed some light, probably just the wrong doctor. Yeah. And I would say that I've worked, I've worked with now three, but two different doctors prior to working with through live health. And this has been a much, almost feels like an easier process so far. So it has just been like the beginning stages. Right. And it's a lot of, um, like, like Andrew said, with women, it's very complicated. You're balancing multiple hormones that throughout our cycle, throughout a month, all do different things. <laughs> so it's a little bit crazy, but it has been, I feel like um, they've been pretty speedy in terms of how much time it takes to get you started. Cause that's like the worst, that was the worst part was like, I knew I needed to, as soon as I got, you know, 
my blood done. I waited for the phone call with my doctor and I'm just like waiting, waiting. Cause you just want to feel better. Like as soon as possible, you're like, okay, what are the issues? And when can we start fixing them? Right. Like it's just instant. Like when you go on a diet and you're like, why have I not lost any weight? And it's yeah. like two days. I know people keep it's like family or whatever. Keep asking like, how do you feel? You feel better? And I'm like, not yet. <laughs> no, <laughs> not yet. I did say it's going to be probably a couple months. Well, you, if you think about it, it's like, it took me this long to get this fucked up. So it's probably going to take a while to, you know, get yeah. unfucked. All right. I got another email from, <laughs> this is good. Karen Whitaker. I'm going to read the last part of this email first. Okay. It says, yes, my name is Karen, but I'm not the stereotypical Karen from the memes. <laughs> <laughs> Which now we found out what that actually means. So that's good. I'm 32 and I don't have the haircut. I have no kids, so I didn't take them for it from an ex-husband, which I also do not have. No, I would not like to speak to the manager. My first name is just unfortunate, but my middle name is worse. <laughs> <laughs> I wish she would have told us her middle name. Oh, I know. She didn't say it. No, she just said, Karen, you better. My first just- name is unfortunate, but my middle name is worse. <laughs> Okay, Karen, you need to email us back and tell us what your middle name is. Yes. We won't we won't air it, but we just want to know. We're on the edge right. of our seats now. She says, Brooke and Gina, I love the podcast. You guys talk about things that are so relatable and I love your random conversation. Oh, thank you. Brooke, I also have hormone issues and I've spent so much money trying to correct it and I feel like I have gotten w- nowhere. I was wondering if you could send me the info for the place you are using to have your hormones checked and fixed. I tried to look it up online and I didn't find it. So if you could send me the info for it, I would greatly appreciate it. Also keep us updated on the podcast if it helps you. Thanks for keeping the podcast going. It makes at least one hour of my day better while I'm at work. Yes, I will send you an email. I'll do it right now. Um, (laughs) Yeah, otherwise you'll forget. Yep. Livehealth.com. What was the other one he said? Is it .org that's the not the right yeah. one? Okay. Yeah. Because I was actually trying to, when I was, you know, sending, like making sure we had the right link for the website. Uh, well, he Andrew actually texted me and said that they had put the wrong one up there. They just put live with L-I-V-E. Uh-huh. Anyways, if you saw that, they sh- we had, we changed it. But when I was, when she, she was changing it for me to the correct uh, web address, I couldn't remember, like, is it, is it .org? Is it .com? So I was going on to it on my phone and it is .com. Dot I swear to you, it's always like that when you purposely try to remember what it's not supposed to be. Yeah. Does that make sense? And then it's the first one that pops up in your brain. Are you emailing her right now? Yeah, I'm just sending it before I forget. Good girl. <laughs> She's going to open that email and all it is... <laughs> It's just a- Karen, if you're listening to this, I'm sorry. It's so short and straight to the point. It's just the website and then says what code to use. And then a smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> I have no time to actually make small talk. No, <laughs> to be completely honest. I'm not good at small talk. No, neither one of us are. Yeah. We're bad. I think that's why we work so well. Mm-hmm. It's like, um, as everybody knows, we, Brooke and I are getting into this swing of like not seeing each other, which sucks, Yeah, but we're so bad at small talk that like, we won't talk for like, it's like, unless there's like something big happening, <laughs> neither one of us want to talk to each other. <laughs> People will be like, how's Brooke? I'm like, I think she's good. I think she's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, like we just like talk about things that are pertinent. Like it's not going to be, Hey Brooke, how are you? I mean, like, we'll like text each other, like, like randomly, like, I love you. I love you too. Miss you. Miss you too. But it's like, we both know that we don't want to be like, how are you? Dude, that's like your, it's like a, it gives me, (laughs) what did you do today? Like, uh, yeah. Like we know each, we love each other. If there's something important, we'll talk to each other about it. setting new goals, creating and sticking to healthy habits, building a daily routine you can actually keep. Making these changes should be easy, right? Well, if you're not sure how or where to start, then it's time to try Fabulous. It's been a game changer for me. 
Fabulous is the habit-changing app that gives you the tools and skills you need to feel healthier, more productive, and fulfilled. Fabulous helps you break free of negative habits while helping you build new healthy ones that stick. By using behavioral science, Fabulous breaks down scientifically proven healthy habits into a daily routine of very small tasks that you can easily achieve every single day. The gratitude challenge helped me show gratitude to someone every single day for a week, and that helped me become more mindful. Becoming a Fabulous premium member is also a total game changer. Premium gives you access to daily coaching content sessions, unlocks all guided behavior your change programs and let you add as many habits as you'd like in your routine. Start building your ideal daily routine today with Fabulous Premium. Get 25% off Fabulous Premium by going to thefab.co slash reps. That's T-H-E-F-A-B dot C-O slash reps for 25% off Fabulous Premium. Thefab.co slash reps. If you have been looking for a way to make grocery shopping easier, especially when it comes to sourcing beef, chicken, pork, even fish, you've got to check out Good Chop, America's online butcher. With Good Chop, you get a flexible monthly subscription plan for high quality American meat and seafood. Good Chop offers convenient, contact free delivery right to your doorstep. You can do fully customizable boxes with your choice of beef, chicken, seafood, and pork products that you like. For instance, with beef, you can order well-marbled Angus Choice and Prime Cuts or get delicious 100% grass-fed steaks. All products are sourced from the USA. Unlike many other companies, Good Chop sources its meats and seafood exclusively from American farms and fisheries that set the bar high for animal welfare and sustainable practices. If you're like me and you're traveling a lot or you really enjoy having people over, but going to the grocery store last minute is always a stress, I highly recommend you check out a company like Good Chop. Go to goodchop.com slash reps100 and use the code reps100 to get $100 off your first three boxes. Again, that's goodchop.com slash reps100 and use the code reps100 to get $100 off your first three boxes. Good Chop, America's online butcher. Mm -hmm. In fact, we can talk about that for a second. Okay. I don't even like that this is how I am because (laughs) I wish that I could offer more to people that like friends, uh, family, but My, when I get a text message and it could just be that I like, you know, I get anxious and, you know, add it, add it to the list of things that have been going wrong with me for the last couple of years. But, um, you think you're going to fix your hormones and then just become super chatty. You want to talk? How was your day? Someone texts me and it says, well, one, you can honey, you can honey trap me. And honey bucket or honey trap, whatever it's called. I don't know what, I don't know what you're talking about either way. It's a type of like, it's a, it's okay. Honey bucketing or like honey trapping. I think it's a honey, honey bucket, whatever it is. You could say it's a woman, right. Who's fucking crazy, but okay. she's super hot. And she kind of honey traps you where it's like this idea where you, you get sucked in and then you get, you're like stuck. Oh, then you're stuck. Got it. And okay. you're like, you get in. You're stuck in the honey. As you're stuck in the honey, you're realizing how fucking crazy this person is. Or like, oh no, I got to get out of here, but you can't. You're oh, I, oh yes. Okay. So you're going to know who I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, speaking to a certain person, yes. uh, uh, I was telling you, I made the mistake of saying, how are you? Oh, yes. Look at me. You know who I'm talking about? <laughs> and I knew it as soon as I started to say it, like, oh fuck. Oh man. But How it's like one of those do I have. Yeah, it's like one of those things like you know somebody's going through something, you don't want to completely ignore it, but you don't really want to talk about it. So you try to be a nice person, but then you totally open yourself up to just fucking yourself. What you should have done in that moment is like, actually, no, I'm sorry. I don't really care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> actually, no, uh, I don't have time for this, but, um, if you want to send me an email, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> with uh, a no you know, three page paper. Yeah. No. Um, okay, sorry. Go ahead. Basically, so basically I can get honey bucketed, honey bucketed. 
Pony if book nerd? someone texts me and I, maybe it's someone I haven't talked to in a long time or whatever, could be family, could be friend. Uh, and some people just have that personality where they want to say, how are you? You know? Well, some people like, I mean, okay. And not, not that you don't really care. This is going to come off with really like an asshole. But like in that quick exchange, you're right. There are some people that really have the time to listen and want it. Yes. And they want it. Um, yeah. So sometimes if someone texts me and it's like, hey, or hey, Brooke, something like that. And I'm like, oh, and I'm like, hey. And they're like, oh, my God, how are you? And I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> now I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> but if some, sometimes people, and it depends on the person and yeah. the list of people that I could, I will respond to, even if they say, how are you is just so small. I know. I know. I know. And there's, <laughs> there are times that I've received a text and it's like, Hey, how are, how are you? I haven't, I haven't been touching so long. And I just open it and I immediately get this rush of anxiety like as if I need to lay down and I go, Oh no. And I go, "Mm, not today. (laughs) (laughs) And then you just ignore it. Then you just look like an asshole. (laughs) And then I go, or it's like, or it's like, I know I'm going to come back to this. And then I always don't back to it. And then don't, I know. Well, so my thing is, um, so I have a few friends that I've had for a lot of years um, that I still consider very close friends, even though I probably talk to them like once a month. Um, but I would never like, for me, I would just rather talk to them on the phone. Mm-hmm. And there's very few people that I want to talk to on the phone, but it's like, if I'm going to catch up with you, I'm not going to do it from text. First of all, can't see well. Um, if I don't have my glasses on, I'm like squinting and, and i have giant fingers. So I'm constantly fucking up the things. And anyway, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so like if somebody texts me, hey, how are you? I'll be like, I'm great. You know what? I'd love to catch up with you later. I'll call you if it's like a really close friend. But yeah. if it's just like uh, someone that's, uh, that I'm not super close to, then I'll be like, good. <laughs> you know, like, like, hope you're doing well. And then that way I'm not even saying like, how are you? Oh, yeah. I'm doing great. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> even just even, even just discussing these conversations, yeah, is like stressing me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know it's it's. It, I, honestly, just saying it out loud just really makes me sound like a giant asshole. But no, I understand what you're saying. Like, I wish that I was a better friend in the way. So, like, like for instance, I um I saw so Sarah said hello. By the way. Oh, hello. My, my, my girlfriend, Sarah, we've been friends for a very long time. Um, and so, uh, she came over and we went and took a walk and I love doing that. Cause then I, you know, we can catch up and, and all of that. And her, uh, you know, she had a death in the family, like back in November. And, you know, I was at, at first when she told me, I was, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Da, 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 da. But like, I realized through the holidays and everything, I have not checked up on her once and asked her about it. And I thought, oh my God, like she was coming over today. And I was like, I am a giant fucking asshole. Cause all I'm thinking, she's such a great friend. She's like such a better friend than me that she's the kind of person, like when my dad passed suddenly years ago, like 10 years ago, I mean, she and my friend Kimmy were like, at my house every day, bringing me food, sending me flowers, like, che- like, cause it was, and, and here the same thing happens to her, you know, he kind of, I mean, he was sick and, and all of that, but like something happens and I'm like, Oh my God, I literally just texted you one day and like never asked you about it again. <laughs> so she walks in the door and I just looked at her and I go, Sarah, you know, how, how are you doing with it? And she goes, I go, I am a terrible friend and I am so sorry. You were so good to me. And I just realized how shitty I am. And she goes, oh no, you're not a shitty friend. I don't want to talk about it. (laughs) And I go, okay, but yeah, but like, I wish, I wish there was a, a, I mean, it's, it's nice when you have a very close friend and they, they know your strengths and your weaknesses and they can just accept that. Like me and you, like (laughs) you and me, exactly. And, and you can accept that. 
and go, oh, well, I know it's not that they don't love me, but they're just not good at this or they're not good at that. And it made me think about that. And I just thought, God, you know, I got to be more like that, but I, it's just not in me. Dude, I have been shitty like that. I've had, this has happened multiple times enough now that I'm so aware of it when it's happening. And I almost, I feel like I, uh, you almost feel like, uh, backed into a corner. And yeah. it's when something has ha- like someone says something in conversation, or maybe they, they, they confide in you or you hear about something and I, you know, someone died or maybe it's someone who's telling you how much they love you or they care about you or whatever. And like, you do feel the same way. So this, ha- this happens in my mind. <laughs> I overanalyze. Um, so, Okay. The response, like if you said to me, Mm -hmm. I love you so much and I'm so grateful for you. And I would then start thinking, well, I feel the exact same way. Right. I'll overanalyze how to respond to you because if I, you don't want to sound like, if I don't respond and sometimes there's like, there'll be this uh, like space of time where I'm thinking like, what's the right thing to say? (laughs) <laughs> because I don't want to be like, oh, I, what, what, what I want to do or what's the natural reaction is to say the exact same thing to you. But right. then my, the way my brain works is I don't want you to think that I'm just saying, saying it because exactly. you said it to me. Yes. Like it's so inauthentic. I'm, so I'm trying to like, yes, I'm trying to think of like, how can I respond to you? <laughs> how can I one up you? How can I respond to you? <laughs> And in a way that's not just almost, it feels like, uh, it feels too easy. If I just say, inauthentic. Oh, oh, I love you. And I really appreciate you too. It's like, are you just, I know probably probably part of it is just that I'm a re I'm so dumb. Like it's not my, it's like the only reason that I'm doing it is like, I really, you know, in, in emotional situations, not all the time, but like sometimes when people tell you something that's kind of emotional and they don't say it's not, they're not asking you a question. They're just telling you something and you can, you feel that the right thing to do is to give them a response, right? Like, like I hear you in a way. Um, but not all the time. Does that feel natural? <laughs> right. Like you, you don't know what to say, especially if we're, you're, you know, me and you, are the type of person that we can't even respond to a, Hey, how are you text? Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. You're like, Oh fuck. If I can't even like talk, talk about how I am, like what what the hell am I going to respond to you? Like someone's like, uh, okay. I can give you a perfect example. My sister, Robin, she was telling me that she's really concerned, worried about a friend of hers because she's had all this, like tons of sinus pressure. And, um, her eyes on bulging. She's had oh. some other weird shit. And the doctors have just kept telling her it's just sinus. It's just sinus. It's just sinus. Well, she finally found out she actually has, a, it's a tumor. Oh my God. Yeah, but Robin's like telling me this story, right? Yeah. And I'm listening and I know this person. And my response is like, oh man, that's, it's like, it's like a moment oh, where it's like, man. Oh, I literally, Gina, it's like in a moment where I feel this amount of like stress because I do, like, I do care, but you're not I, good that, at that's fine. terrible, but it's like, yeah. what do I say? Cause I'm not the kind of person that wants to know every detail of everyone's life. Like, I don't need to know every single detail about your life, but some people really love details. They love yes. to feel involved, right? We've had friends like that and they're yes. difficult. Yes. But because I'm not like that, it's like, I'm here for you. If you need me, I will listen to you if you need, if you need me to listen to you. But like, uh, in moments where, you know, that's a really shitty, terrible thing. There's yeah. nothing I can do about it. And the only, I don't really have much of a response. It's like, I hear that. And I'm like, man, that really sucks. And then it's like, all right, what do you want to talk about now? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. No, but I understand what you're saying. It's like, I mean, how would, how would I even like have the words to 
to express like how bad that is. Yeah. You know, like, no, I totally get that. Yeah. I, um, I, I was just talking about this to another friend cause I, cause we have another mutual friend that is the same way. It's almost like she's so, and my, I have uh, my youngest sister is the same way. They, they, if you have something to tell them, they, and they're great listeners, but they have tons to say about it. So like, um, you know, like you said, like they have, you know, like something terrible happens to them is, oh my God, like, when did you find out? What did it, and all this stuff? Like, I feel like that's crying, huh? especially if it's like somebody that I'm not like super close to, but like, um, uh, Sarah and I have another friend who is extremely like knows everything about everybody. And I'm like, so not interested in that. Like, it's almost like crazy. Like, I'm like, do people just tell you like people that you barely know, just like come up and just tell you things that you haven't even asked about. Cause how do you know all this about somebody? But there are, there's just some people that really care about what's going on with everybody. And you and I are not those people. No. So it's like very, it's very hard to relate to. And then what was I thinking the other day? Oh, I realized uh, I was talking to my brother-in-law, Joe, and he's very, uh, he's been on the podcast. He's like very into, you know, he does a lot of counseling, mindfulness and like, and, and with people with like drug issues and all this stuff. And he's a really great listener, but it's almost to the point where it makes me uncomfortable because I'll be talking and he's not like, I feel like we're not having a reciprocal conversation, but he's uh-huh. being a really great listener. But then I feel like I'm rambling. Uh-huh. So then I realized because I'm like that, when I'm having a conversation with somebody else, I'm constantly trying to interject or relate to them. Make them so feel say, like I'm listening. Right. Yes. But what I'm realizing, and, and this actually happened when like, say somebody's talking to me about something their kid went through and my kid went through the same thing rather than me, let them completely tell it. And I'm sure I do this to you and do it to everybody when they're before they're even done completely telling it, I'm already interjecting with, Oh yeah. When my kid da 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 da, but in my head, <laughs> this is terrible, but in my brain, I'm thinking, Oh, I want you to understand. I, I understand that. Yeah. But what I realize what I'm doing is I'm, I look like I'm one upping you. You're a one upper. I'm a one upper, <laughs> but it's not my, it's not my intent at all, at all. <laughs> and it was really made apparent to me. Uh, I don't know. It was, I think it was last year when we went uh, paintballing mm-hmm. for Daniel and Sam's birthdays and we had all gone paintballing and then Remember, we all went to the restaurant after and had dinner, but because of COVID, they could only seat us in like fours and fours. And it was Sam and I sitting with Marcus and Megan. And (laughs) I'm like just sitting there and Megan's talking about something. And so I'm saying, oh yeah, you know, when da 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 you know, and and in my brain, I'm thinking, I want you to understand that I have empathy for like for that because I've also gone through that. So I understand what that feels like. Well, (laughs) Sam just looks at me and he goes, Okay, one upper. And I go, one upping. And I was like, because I think of like a one upper is like, you know, I got this, you know, I, I, I don't know. I got this horrible accident. I got in a worse accident. I, you know, I, I went to somewhere tw- two times. I went there three times, you know. But then I was realizing and I go, one upper. And he goes, yeah, just let her talk. <laughs> I mean, it takes a good friend to be able to say that to you, right? Yeah. And I go, huh? Yeah. I never thought of myself like that. So now I notice myself doing it and it's horrible. It's like, somebody is talking about this and I'm like, Oh, and like, I try to stop myself. Like, Oh fuck. You know, I don't want to be the one upper. Yeah. 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 It's almost like worse when you're made aware of it because then you're like overly conscious of it.
Brooke and I can talk to each other till we're blue in the face about all of our problems. And it's really nice to have somebody listen to you, but neither one of us are licensed professionals. Let's just be honest. So we use BetterHelp. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can connect in a safe and private online environment. It's so convenient. You don't have to make an appointment, go down to an office, sit there, fit it into your schedule. You can connect with your licensed professional therapist from pretty much wherever you can get online. You can start communicating in under 24 hours. It is not self-help. It is professional counseling. You can send a message to your counselor anytime and you'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. BetterHelp service is available for clients worldwide. There is a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. Licensed professional counselors who are specialized in depression, anxiety, stress, relationships, family conflicts, anger, the list goes on and on. Anything you share is confidential. As I said before, it's convenient, it's professional, affordable, and you can check out the testimonials posted daily on their site. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. We want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash reps. Join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot slash reps. Let's see. What's another thing that I've dealt with? What's another I've, thing? I've definitely tried to work on like listening, right? I mean, I do listen really well, but I've had conversations like with my boyfriend where it's like a very sweet, like, you know, he might be, he might be telling me how much he, how much he loves and cares about me. Right. And I'm listening. I'm listening. And then I'll have the same sort of like, uh, yeah, you too. No, like, (laughs) no, it's almost like, I'm I'm listening. I'm I'm having a hard time knowing what to say back because what is being said isn't necessarily in a question or it doesn't really require uh, a response or And so I'm thinking, and then he'll even, he'll even say to me sometimes like, do you have anything to say? Uh -uh. (laughs) And I'll be like, yeah, I'm working on it right now. Oh, it's it's my turn. (laughs) (laughs) Or he just like wants to know like my thoughts. Like do you have any thoughts on about that? It could be about, it could be about all kinds of conversations. Right. And I've literally said back before, like, no. And he's like, what really? And I'm like, fuck, come up with a thought, come up with a thought, come up with a thought. (laughs) Well, that's the hard thing when somebody's really like emotionally intelligent, which Mm -hmm. I don't consider myself (laughs) at all. Um, or when somebody's really good at expressing themselves verbally, that is not me either. Yeah. No, when you're with someone and and it doesn't mean that you can't be or learn to be, but I think that it's hard when somebody or, or somebody's so good at verbally saying how they feel about you and, and explaining their love for you or explaining their gratitude. Uh, and then it, it flips on you. You're like, Oh, what the yeah. fuck? Like I, I have all these things in my head. I mean, yeah. like you and I have talked about that before. There's been times like when we've been with people and you're just looking at it and you're like, God, I just love you so much. And I just think you're so great. And look how cute you are. And, and it's all in your head, but you don't, it doesn't come out your mouth. Yeah, I don't say it. And then when it's in that kind of reciprocal uh, situation, it doesn't feel authentic. It doesn't feel authentic. Yeah. It it feels like you're just saying ditto. Yeah. Or, or like I've had times where, you know, like he challenges me and and I've told him so many times, like I have a hard time expressing myself Uh and we've had this conversation. It could just, I do. Um, I can have all these feelings, but sometimes I have, I struggle to get them out. So I will do it, but we have an understanding. It's like me and you, like there's an understanding that like this might sound a little messy, but I'm going to do the best I can. <laughs> right, right. This isn't, this is not going to be something you want to put on a Hallmark card. Right. Okay? It's not going to come out. It's going to be, might not make sense. It might come out exactly how it's written in my head in bullet points. <laughs> you just no. it's going to come out sounding like what's that guy from sling ba- sling blade. No, I don't know. Fried potato. Mm-hmm. 
I like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like him. <laughs> sorry. Billy Bob Thornton. I'm like, who, who is that actor? Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. But yes. Yeah. And then when I'm th- like when I'm trying, right. Or I'm, and I'm, I want it to be eloquent and make sense. And as I'm trying to do it in my head, usually what will happen is like, uh, like you said, like we might be interacting with someone and there might be something going on and um, you're thinking all these things, but it doesn't come out your mouth. And then all of a sudden you're like, when you're ready to say something, the time has passed and you're like, Oh, well, missed my opportunity. <laughs> right. <laughs> Guess I'll have to I'll have to think on this for a little while again. <laughs> I'm gonna have to schedule that. I've literally had so many times. I'm introverted, you know, and it's like you get put in a situation where I have so many thoughts, but it it feel it's almost as if like my brain's not connected to my mouth, so I'm thinking so many things and none of it. Every time I'm, it's like, I'll overthink the thought I have to share. And then when I kind of, when I'm, when I think, when I'm ready to share it, like again, the, the time has passed, the opportunity is missed. So I don't say it. So I, I'm constantly, it's like, I'm not, it's not that I don't have a response or I don't want to like, you know, tell you how pretty you are, or it's almost as if I get stuck in my brain and it's just easier. It's easy. It's just easier for us to just be like, <laughs> just look at each other. It's like, I'm it's, having, like, it's like I'm having so many conversations with people, but none of it's coming out of my mouth. It's just like <laughs> it's like when I respond to you with my mind in my brain. <laughs> always. Always through telepathy. And I'm always like, huh? No, you definitely didn't say that. You guys, I we haven't said a word for half an hour. Pretty sure we've shared this on the podcast before, but I'll share it again. A classic me. Uh showing up to Gina's house for a, a bar friend barbecue. This is when I lived in Santa Cruz and I walk in the door and she looks at me and goes, you didn't tell me you were coming. And I said, yeah, I did. She goes, no, you didn't. And I was like, yes, I did. And she goes, she's, she's like, it's basically like another classic, classic Brooke response to you in her head situation. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, those no, moments, like a moment where it's like, got a group text. Don't want to be a part of the group text. Read it, put it down. But in my head, I go, yep, I'll be there. Put it down. <laughs> Forgot to text it, but I was like, oh yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> Didn't come back. <laughs> Group texts can sometimes just be an absolute fucking nightmare. Oh yeah. Absolute nightmare. And I'm not saying that I've never, I mean, like I will now, now it's gotten to the point with certain people. Like if you're on a group text with like, sorry, I have something in my teeth. That's okay. If you have like a group text with a lot of, with a, with a lot of people that like to respond like funny, witty things, Right. Um, then you feel more like, well, I, I need to like, like that comment or heart that or do that because I don't want to look like an asshole. Right. Yes. Cause then I just look like a spectator. I'm just like lurking on this, on this thing. So I, I try to like put things in there, but then I think, well, I can't complain about it if I'm, you know, sending this little, what are they called? A gif or yeah. a, a gif, you know, and some of them are funny. Um, but man, like I've been on group text that, uh, have lasted like an entire day. Oh, yeah. And then there's like somebody that goes through the whole group text and is like responding to everything. Like all of a sudden it's like, so-and-so like this and hearted that and sent this and responded to this. And it's like, Oh my God, this is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> Dude, nightmare. I've been, I've been in, uh, in a group text where something's funny. Right. And now people are doing like the funny gifts. Yeah. And I have just sat with that little, the bar open, just like trying to wrap my brain, like rack, rack my brain thinking like, okay, what would be funny? <laughs> <laughs> what should I type in here? That's going to give me exactly what I, I kind of want. And then send a really funny, really funny clip. Or really- you know, the worst is the worst is when you think you're being really funny and like everyone's responding to everyone's text. Right. So it's like somebody says something super witty and everyone's like, ha 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 or likes it or loves it. And then somebody responds to it with another funny thing. And then you try to respond with something funny and crickets, nobody even res- And it's almost like they just brushed right over it and then just kept commenting underneath it. And I'm like, what? 
nobody likes or hearts mine. Yeah. <laughs> like, I thought it was pretty funny. You're like, just yeah. me? I start to get hurt feelings in the group <laughs> chat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I don't know. That's so funny. What was the? Remember the time we had a group? We had a group text, and Jordan kept leaving the group text, and Katie kept adding back in. <laughs> Dude, I love that shit. It's so good. Yeah. So we had. A, I mean, it was probably like a ten-person group chat, and there was this one person that, and it usually starts with. Um, you know, everyone is invited to my house on Friday from bring this. Da, 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 da. And usually um, if I do things with like family and stuff, I'll say, don't respond to this group. Just side text me. Let me know if you're coming and, and, and what you're bringing. And so we usually do that. And, but this, this group text had just like gone crazy. And this, and our friend Jordan had been added into it. And so, yeah, he kept leaving. It kept, you, you'd see it. Jordan huh. da, 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 has, has left the conversation. And then Katie is side texting us and going, Oh guys, watch this. I'm going to add him back in. So, I think she did it. Like, I'm sorry. She did it like three or four times. Like three or four times. And then other people go, Oh my God. It's so good. I just love, uh, I loved it. I'm so good. So funny. <laughs> he deserved it. Crotchety, yeah. crotchety little grumpy dude. Mm-hmm. But anyway, oh, funny stuff. All right, guys. Yeah, this is gonna be a short one. This is yeah. it. <laughs> this is it. I'm gonna. T- it. I think I'm gonna take a nap. Hey, you need to go take a nap. I do. So your hormones are fixed. I need to take a coma. <laughs> you need to take a coma. Yeah. <laughs> Don't <laughs> take a coma. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'll go have a stroke. You have a coma. Just you take you take a coma and you wake up and you've lost like you know a few pounds. <laughs> That's what you think. <laughs> Tell me you have the body dysmorphia without telling me you have body dysmorphia. <laughs> okay, let me just reference. The <laughs> I could lose a few pounds, dude. You know how shitty you would you would look. Your mouth spent like been on a ventilator for how long? Let me just tell you how shitty. Yeah, you're right. You'll be thinner, but you're gonna look real fucking shitty. <laughs> not like a long coma okay oh like a what? hours like one week <laughs> i just i recently had watched a video of this uh like a personal uh, some trainer guy that's got a lot of credentials but he's talking about people that are thinking that they need to be exercising so much and that's how they lose weight and what he's explaining he's explaining people he feel he he doesn't he feels bad for people that like don't enjoy certain types of exercise, like don't enjoy running, but they're running all the time, but they hate it, but they're running. Cause that's how you lose weight. And he's saying you actually like when we lose weight is when we're in like a caloric caloric deficit. And when we're sleeping, like when we're asleep and the exercise we do like weight training, running, whatever, it's, it adds up for like to a pretty, like a, you know, not a very big percentage of what it takes to drop five, 10, 15 pounds, whatever more. Um, you really need sleep. You do need to be in a caloric deficit and the exercise you put in is definitely going to help you. Obviously the more muscle we have, the more calories we burn, blah, 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 blah. But he was talking, like the whole subject was it, he felt so bad for the people that didn't understand that. And they were, you know, maybe not taking into consideration the caloric deficit and then like sleeping and recovering. And they were trying, they're really focusing mostly on like, I need to run all the time. I need to run all the time. Right. I hate running. He's like, you know, wanting them to enjoy the exercise they're doing. And if you're just trying to lose weight, you know, lose fat, you're, you've got it all wrong. Like, right all the, these other things play a huge role. In fact, we do, we, we lose weight at nighttime when we sleep. Well, and that would be so frustrating, but that's why I was saying three times a week. <laughs> that's like, why I was saying, you know, three times take, a day. Yeah. Take a light coma. <laughs> <laughs> take a light coma. <laughs> that's so fucked up. Our minds are so fucked up that we're allowing this. There's probably like people out there like, it's not a laughing matter. It's like, of course it's not a laughing matter. That's why it's well, funny. <laughs> 
of course there's you know, a handful of people potentially out of like the few thousand that listen to us that are thinking like, I cannot believe that Brooke is joking about a co- about comas. I, you know, my, my, no, that's not the point relative. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not the point. Yeah. So if that offends you, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. That's, sorry. Like, that's like the least offensive thing that I've, that I could say that, <laughs> that could potentially offend you. So if that does offend you, you're at the wrong, you're in the wrong place. I feel like that's going to be like the next like diet trend. Like, Hey, put yourself in a coma. Hey, a light coma. Hey, coma light. Yeah. Coma light. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, dude. It's like, uh, you know, like people that get like the IVs or whatever. It's going to be like the next thing. Put yourself in a, you know, self-induced coma for a week. All these people are just coming. <laughs> Never mind. I'm, I'm not going to go now. into that. I feel like I have more, really energy, more energy right now than I than I have had all day. And I think it's because I miss you. I miss you too. Like, no, like <laughs> that, that was one of those situations. Like you said at oh, first, I was like, no, I, I, <laughs> well, I miss you more. Brooke and I'll do that all the time. Like she'll, she'll like randomly text me something. It's like a picture. It'll be like, love you. And I'm like, love you. And then she'll be like, love you more. And I was like, nah, we'll argue about it tomorrow. Or like, it's like always like one upping. See, I'm a one upper. Um, but, uh, no, I know we miss, I, I miss you terribly. I was just telling Sarah about it on the walk. It's funny. Cause it's like, what, uh, you know what I was thinking about the other day is we were so blessed to be in the same town during like all the lockdowns and all that stuff. And people would write in and they'd be like, I've been so isolated and I haven't, you know, been able. And I, and I just can't imagine because now it's been what you moved out, moved in October. October. So it was like October, November, I got to see you in December. And then it's been the rest of December, January. So it hasn't been more than like, you know, a couple months, I guess, give or take. Well, it's a long time for us, but all I kept thinking was, oh my God. Like, you know, I remember thinking, oh yeah, that would suck. But now I really realize how that would suck not being with your best friend or not seeing them or not being with them. And then I was sitting there thinking, you're supposed to come here. And now you're putting that off. And I'm like, well, fuck, when am I going to see you? Because I don't know when I can get to Utah. Well, anyway, we can argue about this later, but I will be, I will be coming. I just got to wait for a few things. Yeah, I know. But anyways, yes, guys, we miss each other. People ask me that all the time. Do you miss her? I'm like, well, of course I fucking miss her. (laughs) Yes. Nah. 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 Mm, It's like nothing. Nah. Nah. But yeah. Um, Wait, okay. All right. Well, hey, guys, thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe. Five-star rating, five-star warning. And we'll talk to you next week. We'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. If you have been looking for a way to make grocery shopping easier, especially when it comes to sourcing beef, chicken, pork, even fish, you've got to check out Good Chop, America's online butcher. With Good Chop, you get a flexible monthly subscription plan for high quality American meat and seafood. Good Chop offers convenient, contact free delivery right to your doorstep. You can do fully customizable boxes. There's something for everyone mouth watering ribeyes, flavorful T bones wild-caught salmon, tender chicken breasts, and more. By choosing Good Chop, you support local family farms and independent ranchers right here in the U.S. If you're like me and you're traveling a lot or you really enjoy having people over, but going to the grocery store last minute is always a stress, I highly recommend you check out a company like Good Chop. Go to goodchop.com slash reps100 and use the code reps100 to get $100 off your first three boxes. Again, that's goodchop.com slash reps100 and use the code reps100 to get $100 off your first three boxes. Good Chop, America's online butcher.